Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. I'm your host, JK Amazie, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Today, we're going to be speaking about emotion and motion. Now, back in the day when I was doing the whole door-to-door thing, there was a manager in our company and his nickname was Spartan. I was a guy who could motivate a lot of people. He had this saying he would repeat, and it was just take the E out of emotion and you get motion and just take action. And what that meant was that instead of just talking about all the emotions that you're dealing with, how do I deal with the emotions? There's a time to simply move forward, make progress, build up momentum, and then make even more progress. We have a free private Facebook group on Facebook, obviously. And right now we have about, as of December uh, 13th, we have about just over 2,000 members. But we actually get thousands and thousands of applicants, and we have an almost full-time virtual assistant who just (laughs) goes through every single application and just decides who's going to be within the group and who's not going to be in the group. And one of the reasons why I do this is because a lot of men who are looking for help with the out-of-control behavior are very attached to their emotion. In our group, I go through the group once a week, and I also kick out men who complain a lot without offering a solution or suggesting a solution for themselves and then asking what other people think about it. So for example, could be, you know, I had a very stressful day and I came back and I slipped. I feel frustrated. I It sucks because I have this, they're still attached to streaks. So they're like, I had this, you know, 30 day streak or this 40 day streak and I feel this way. Here's what I'm going to do to set up a boundary around this thing. What do you guys think about that? Or I thought that my boundary was going to work or I thought that my self-care was good enough, but it isn't, and that's frustrating. What are your thoughts? So when guys are just showing up to vent and to just share their emotions alone, which is healthy, but if that's all they're doing, they eventually get removed from the group. See, when you slip and you choose to focus on the shame, the disappointment, the frustration, and so on, you are literally choosing the emotion over motion. You are choosing the emotion over moving forward. And the truth is, you can only have one of those. You can either have the emotion, and if you have the emotion, you're not going to have the motion. It's one or the other. I've often said that your emotions have nothing to do with your obligations. And when I bring this up, I'll have the occasional person show up and say, well, JK, that means that you don't really understand what you're dealing with. Like, what does that mean? Well, you know, a lot of porn addicts are, they deal with depression. And, you know, depression can stop you from doing all these different things. Now, depression is a real thing. There are men who are clinically depressed. There are men who go through various bouts of depression. I am one of those men who at least, I would say two times a year, I'll go through just this phase of depression. There's a heavy cloud over me. And there is often really no coping strategy that I have that can overcome that deep sadness right? I'm a human being. I'm a work in progress. But I'll tell you what that doesn't do to me. It never stops me from going through with my obligations. I may feel no need to even exist on our planet. Like there's no point in me being here. But again, that deep emotion that is permeating every aspect of my being, for those of you who have struggled with any form of depression, It's actually not physically holding me back from accomplishing and doing what needs to be done, right? Now, granted, what needs to be done might not be done as efficiently or in the best way possible during that time, but it still gets done. A guy say like, oh, no, that means that you're probably not depressed. Here's here's proof of that. Slavery. 
at least slavery in America, right? Now in America, slaves worked 10 to 16 hours a day, Monday through Saturday. And the only day that they had off was Sunday for the Sabbath. And you were put to work as soon as you were three to four years old, right? Uh, toddlers were already weeding and picking up trash and carrying drinking water and feeding livestock and helping in the kitchen. Now, were people depressed? You bet they were. <laughs> you bet people were depressed, not being paid, being forced to work, being treated like livestock. Millions and millions of people were depressed, but they still woke up and did what they needed to do. They did it because they had to survive. They did it for the survival of their family. It didn't matter. Yeah, your family could be separated and sold off to another plantation the next day, but you still went to work. Of course, there were exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, that is a time in history that shows, and that's something that I use personally as a motivation for myself, that people were often in circumstances where they had no choice but to do what was demanded of them, what they were obligated to do by the unfortunate nature of the institution of slavery. And they did it regardless of how they felt, right? So we live in a world where for the most part we are free and we are very free compared to slaves from that era. And when a man tells me like, yeah, I was so emotional that I just couldn't take any action or I've just been feeling down, so I haven't done anything, that belief is bolstered by going online and then having other people try to relate to you by telling you like, yeah, it's okay if you're not able to do anything. And that's fine. Maybe you shouldn't be doing anything. The point I'm trying to make is that when you struggle with an out of control behavior, and you make giving in to your emotions a habit and having it as an excuse for not doing certain things in your life, you only have yourself to blame. Because whatever it is you choose, you can only choose one. You can choose emotion or you can choose motion and the progress that comes with it. You simply cannot do both, right? I'll give you a few more examples. If you have marital issues, right, and your only focus is on the emotion coming from those marital issues, right, you're focused on the fear of losing the relationship, you're focused on the anger you feel, you're focused on the frustration of not being able to communicate the way you would prefer to with your spouse, you are not going to be able to move forward until you take that E out of the emotion. Until you make the decision that, you know what, I'm just going, I choose motion. I'm going to take action. There are many men whose partner has discovered that they are viewing pornography. And maybe you're one of those men who told your partner at some point that you had this problem. Maybe she was very upset about it and she said she was going to leave you. But you reconciled with her, you apologized, and you promised her that you were never going to engage in this behavior again. Yet you did, as most men who struggle with this behavior do. And it continued, and finally you get to a point where you realize that, okay, like I need help. And then you get on the phone with one of our reboot strategists. The reboot strategist says like, you know what, <laughs> in order to move forward, and to be in our group, in your situation, it is recommended that you have this conversation with your partner first, because there is, if a reboot strategist discovers that you have so much shame and so much emotion, that means that you're desperate. And if you're desperate and you're reaching out to us, you're probably not going to make a good decision. Yeah, we could easily have a conversation with you when you're desperate and tell you this is the best program for us. But the truth is, ethically, and for myself as the coach, and for the good of all the other men in the community, that is not going to serve anybody in the long run, right? So we prefer that men make a decision from a very logical place. There's still going to be emotion, but we'll tell you, hey, go back and have a conversation with your wife. 
But many men in this situation will go back and they might have a conversation with their wife and then she blows up. She's like, oh my God, I can't believe that you were keeping this from me from all these years. I'm so disappointed. I can't have you under the same roof with me. I just, I just had no idea. Do you not find me attractive? I feel betrayed. I feel like I can't trust you anymore. Is there anything else that's been going on? And the men get caught up in these emotions. They are so caught up in it that they do not take any action. They're like, my priority is saving my marriage. Like I can't, I can't be in a group with other guys because my wife says she just doesn't trust me to be around other guys. She doesn't think that's going to help me. She feels like we need to go to couples counseling. But they are so stuck in that that they don't take any action with ending the out-of-control behavior. They will not go see a therapist who deals specifically with compulsive sexual behaviors. They will not go to a 12-step group they will try to quote unquote fix the issue with their partner when all you're really doing is just choosing the emotion over motion. You might be struggling from the economic impact of COVID on your business or on your career. And then you also have a choice. There are many men who have lost their jobs. There are many men who have lost their businesses or are in the process of losing their businesses. And we've spoken to both types of men, both men at both ends of the spectrum, we still have many men in our group who are losing their businesses or struggling in their career. Of course, we are very sensitive to that and the program is adjusted to that. But my point is, there are men who choose the emotion and they choose to sit in the emotion, not realizing that as long as they stick to that emotion and that story of, oh my goodness, you know, COVID has done this to me, it has done that to me. Yeah, sure, it has right? But at a certain point, in order for you to move forward, you must choose motion. The final thing I'll mention is that, gentlemen, you should be wary of the communities that you spend your time in. If you find yourself in a community where there are a lot of people sharing emotion only, and they are not taking enough action, I guarantee you that the people within that community are not going to get far. And there are a lot of coaches and consultants and influencers out there that attract an audience based on complaining about problems and not actually giving solutions to those problems. And people really like that. You find that many large communities on Facebook and social media and other places are literally made up of people who are following a group or who are following somebody because that person complains and they complain very eloquently and you can relate to the emotions that they're complaining about. And so you don't even know that you are a part of this group. You think you're there to help yourself and they may claim that they're there to help you, but actually what's happening is you're there because of the emotion. When somebody's audience derives mostly from complaining about a very narrow group of problems, what happens is the people in there have less incentive to fix those problems. In many cases, to even acknowledge the progress of other people. And what I mean by that is when somebody shares that they have made progress, you'll notice that some people cheer that, but more people relate to posts and shares where somebody is complaining. They're like, yeah, 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 I feel that way. And that's one of the reasons why, again, the original reason that I shared at the beginning of this episode, why we really reject a lot of people who apply to the group and we, on a consistent basis, go to the group and purge it. Because some people come there and they have that attachment to the emotion, right? And that's how you end up having communities where there's no progress. And these days, unfortunately, it's a tough gig to basically speak the truth because the truth is not sexy, right? The truth, it's not flavored with complaints. It's not flavored with the drama. It is what it is. And the truth is you can either choose emotion or you can choose motion and making progress. And you simply cannot have both. I hope that made sense, brothers. I just jumped on to share that with you today. 
I'm JK, your brother in the struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. Now, whenever you're ready, there are a couple of ways that I can help you to control your out of control behavior with pornography. The first way is to join the group that I talked about right now. It's called the Porn Reboot Group. It's a private Facebook group on Facebook. There's a link to join it in the description below this podcast. The second way is to get on a call with one of our reboot strategists and find out if you are a good fit for our implementation program or our intensive program. And if not, Perhaps you just are a little bit stuck in your reboot and you need some feedback on what you should be working on. Our reboot strategist will help you with that as well. Just make it very clear to them when you get on the phone with them. And finally, if you've been listening to this podcast, but you would like to learn more about this system I'm always droning on and on about, then download a free copy of my ebook. It's called Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men. And it's basically the roadmap to controlling your behavior with pornography using my system. It also has all the lessons that were learned by clients of mine who have been successfully off pornography and masturbation in many cases for quite a number of years. There's also a link in the description below this podcast to download it. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll speak to you later on in the week.